What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 83 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, uh, we are continuing on with what can we do with a 3D printer and how can we work the most efficiently. So one thing that um, once you get into the CAD modeling world is you run into um, how do we take files or things that were created on a different program and use them in Fusion. So for example, if it was an AutoCAD or an Inventor or an Onshape, how am I able to use that within Fusion? So what I've done is I've gone to Thingiverse, we'll see, and I downloaded this um, Sharks compliance machine where um, there's no springs, there's no thing, other than just the flex of the plastic, right, it's able to get that biting motion um, and it looks pretty cool. However, what if we want to do more than just print it? What if we want to personalize it? How can I take this file it gives me and be able to use it? So let's talk a little bit on that vo uh, vocab there. So what we got is, is we have, um, let's go back to this design, and this looks a little ugly. Um, that's because this file type is known as a mesh. And so you can have um, OBJ files or a couple other different types bunch of triangular geometry. Computer thinks really, really hard when you're doing these kind of files. It's because when it gets saved, it gets saved as a mesh, meaning this, when the when I pull this in, the computer and the program doesn't see this as a solid object. Instead, it just sees it as a bunch of 2D shapes, kind of just that outside. And here's how we convert from this into a usable format to where we can do some customization on it. All right. So let's go ahead and start a new design and let's go from scratch. So the first thing I want you to do before you even get started is you have to allow meshes to be used within Fusion. So I'm gonna click on this drop down right here, click on preferences, and it's gonna open up this big menu. Do not start tinkering around with this stuff because you can cause a lot of problems. But click down here on preview features and then mesh workspace, click on make that active. Once you do it, it's going to pop up a little window saying, hey, are you sure you want to do this? This is a something that's in beta and development. You're going to say, yes, I know, it's okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this mesh, and this is what I downloaded from Thingiverse, was this shark's keychain. And so what it's going to do is it's going to pull it in here, and there's a couple of things that are interesting. One, depending upon how that mesh was uploaded, it's going to be not on the origin. So we're gonna go ahead and just center that, move it to ground. And for the sake of this, I'm actually gonna flip it as well and center it, there we go. The second thing you need to know is what are the origin files units? Was this thing built in inches, centimeters, feet? What was it built in? And I know this was built in millimeters um, because that was in the thought description the native files are in millimeters. If I put this in inches, what the problem you run into is that this thing was built, let's say it's 15 millimeters long. If I click on unit type of inch, it's gonna make the shark 15 inches long rather than 15 millimeters. And those are two wildly different numbers. So if your object comes in way too big or way too small, you probably got your native units wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna be in, let's do millimeters. Click OK. All right, and now we've got this mesh. This is not a 3D environment, it's a 2D environment. So what do I do? How do I then be able to use this mesh? Now, what we're gonna do is right click on the top drop down right here where it says unsave. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's just call this shark. All right, so we got the shark. I'm gonna right click on this shark. I'm gonna click do not capture design history. So what it's gonna do is it's now gonna say, we forget everything you did up to this point, this is what it is, and you can't undo it. When we do that, we now notice that I, my drop-down menus up here change, my ribbon changes. So instead of just solid, we now have mesh, and we have form, or sorry, we have surface. So I'm gonna click on mesh, and you see we have some new uh, kind of, interactables in here. 
<clears throat> I'm not going to worry about those at all. Instead, I'm going to right click. I'm going to convert mesh to bitrep. So bitrep allows it to become a 3D environment. It kind of like fills up that 2D uh, mesh layer. We're going to go ahead and make it a new component. Click OK. And now what we have is we have a component of our shark. And since it's a component, we can now edit it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on solid, create sketch, and now I can start a sketch on that surface. So what I did before is I just created some text. Uh, let's do 100 days of fusion. Came in way too big. And so that height for my text anyways came in way too big. So let's make that height for the text to be, let's do three millimeters. That looks much better. I'm gonna rotate it down a little bit and move it right on over. Click OK, click Finish Sketch. Now I'm gonna click on that text, hit E for Extrude. I'm going to bring it down a little bit so it cuts into. Cut. OK. And there we go. So it still looks very, very, very confusing. This looks overwhelming. It's because that solid was filled in by using a bunch of triangles, a bunch of complex geometry stuff that we really don't need to know unless you go way in depth. And if you're trying to figure out about meshes, this video is definitely not for you. And so now we can do, if we look in the render environment, we can look at, this is actually what it looks like. And so a little more closer to real life situations. And so what we can do now is uh, download this as an STL file. We can export it and then 3D print it. So this is all the steps on taking something from the internet or something somebody else has made, pulling it into an environment, a fusion, editing whatever we want to, and then we can now export it to, to our 3D printer or uh, a CNC table or whatever else have you. This prevents us from having to recreate the wheel on something that may be a little bit, um, I'll say complex or involved, and it saves you a bunch of time. I do like the blue one better. That's just my personal opinion. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, comments, concerns on how to do this and how to get it set up well, feel free to throw them down in the comment section. This is something that might be really, really cool uh, if you're getting into the 3D printing world and you want to make some customized pieces that may have your name on it or something nice for somebody else. Uh, but, in the meantime, I will catch you in the next video. Hopefully, I can find some really cool features within Fusion uh, to extend what we can do with a 3D printer. Alrighty guys, I will catch you later. Have fun.